I told the Indian Election Commission in writing as well as personal saying, you shouldn't have put it, what E before it. Because people think it's a computer. That's why every now and then losing party or losing candidate says that there's no fair, there's the rigged and so on. There's no way. Today, having watched a little bit of the DNC, people like Kamala comes, things might change, hopefully. But uh, if you get Trump, then probably I think there's no guarantee that there won't be a war, world war. Thank you for joining the week for an interview. Um, you were instrumental in running the country's first democratic elections in 2008. And prior to that, there was also a mock exercise in 2007. Did you study any models of other countries and how difficult was it to roll out the democratic process? <laughs> no, it is uh, a very fast process. So you had to basically rely on the draft constitution and then interpret it ourselves. But uh, fortunately, uh, we could take some time and also Indian Election Commission invited so we could have a brief orientation visit to India. So that was quite uh, eye-opening for me. But otherwise, basically, we had to interpret what is there in the Constitution, what uh, it is talking about. And, and uh, basically, I'm just a literature student having worked in uh, other non-literature posts, like it's, I spent most of my time in Civil Service Commission, setting up the Civil Service Commission and then running it. Then after that, did a stint with the Trade Ministry, which is Industrial Commerce. That was a new job. Then after which I was in the Royal Institute of Management, setting up the, the, the structure of the Institute of Management. Then I got a job at the, the Auditor General of Bhutan. So which is an interesting and different job. But before that, uh, before I could I finish that, then I was, was sort of uh, commanded to work as Chief Election Commissioner. So it was a completely different turnaround because firstly, in the previous jobs also, I was not educated, trained for that. I was a lot of thinking for teaching, literature, you know. But then in, in uh, the new s system, you have to, to learn whatever the job you're given and try to do the, the best out of it. So election commission also we did the same thing. So I, uh, in the, the royal decree that appointed me says that you have to do two dry runs, which is as you call term it mock election now. So we could do only one because the time was too short. We got uh, starting the business in 2006, January, then uh, by 2007, December, we had to, to, to finish the, the, the National Council elections. You know, so in 2008, uh, March 25th, we finished the, the thing. So literally, we were racing ourselves. And thanks God, everything went on well, I think, uh, because 15 years we have, uh, over 15 years we passed. So I hope we have done the right thing. So um, earlier you said, you know, the king summoned you and he commanded you that you have to hold free and fair elections. So why was the king, king keen to create a democratic system? What was that point when you realized, your country realized that you need to move on? I think parliament? only the king would be able to answer. But then I can guess it is that uh, whenever you talk about monarchy, you think dictatorship, autocratic, you know, things are not good. So probably I think he had a lot of things to, to do, which is more democratic in nature which uh, first and foremost is the people uh, as a priority, you know, because uh, I was there as an assistant protocol officer during the coronation, listening to his speech. He was talking about people's participation. Economic self-reliance and people's participation. I was wondering what is people's participation. And he also said that as a king, he's a single person. He can do everything by himself. So everybody has to be involved. Then obviously, as you went around, he started talking about decentralization, uh, grassroots planning and development, which means people will have to decide what they want. They should plan and they should help government uh, do it, not the king telling them what they need. 
So all these things, maybe, and also during the, the election time, I went for, to vote at my polling station. I think it was uh, BBC or somebody else who asked a question, you know, why, why do you want election? You know? So I think that, uh, you know, in a monarchy, even if it's a good king, people do not uh, think he's good. But if you have a democratic name, maybe I think it will make a difference. Everything will be considered democratic. So maybe that's why King wanted democracy. Uh, so basically, I think uh, all along, we are fortunate that the, starting from the first King, his, his uh, appointment as King is, uh, says, uh, Trump as election, no? He's elected. So whatever it may be. Then obviously the, we had the, the second king also, I think, had uh, modernization and things like that. But particularly third king was very unique. He started having national assembly, uh, even judiciary, people's representatives being appointed, audit people's representatives and, and the monastic communities uh, representing. You know, so everything is done by representative basis, which is more or less democratic, I'm sure. You know, something like that. So then the fourth king, obviously, he went into really having the election. And uh, as a person who was involved in his, at one time one got a little bit jittery and worried also because by the time we were working on election, King goes and addresses the, uh, the nationalist day session in Eastern Britain. He says he's 2008, he's handing over. Mm -hmm. And the elections will be there. You know, we thought we'll have the 2008 for ourselves to plan, but then 2008, March 20, we have finished because we thought of everything hinges on that, so we had to expedite it. So, Port King was a, a strong believer in democracy. I think he he not only he talked about it, he did it. How tough was it to you know reach voters in remote areas and set up polling booths, particularly EVMs? It is. Uh, I didn't say tough, but on the other hand, I think first and foremost, we took it as a important responsibility and historic opportunity. So we worked hard uh, with the people who are not even, we didn't even talk of politics and elections, you know, as a monarchy. We just were supposed to do what the king wants us to do or the government wants us to decide to do it. We didn't, we didn't talk because Democracy means uh, election. Election means political parties. Political parties means opposition and all kinds of things, you know, sort of thing. So, yes, we had to prepare everybody. People come to vote or not, because they said that, no, even it should happen after the election also. The, the, some party members came all the way saying that they, they want to continue with the king, not, not democracy, you know, sort of thing. So, it's like this. So, we, we, we were working on it, we, had, we were concerned because till the last thing it took place, we weren't sure whether we will have democracy or not, at least not because the people, they are happy with the monarchy. Why sh should they go for that? And plus also, I'm like, just now, so I just you know, finished watching the De Democratic National Convention came. Then obviously some off and on, we see the Indian uh, NDTV news and uh, some of these news, you know, most of the people, are not too happy to see this, what, what is being shown in the, the TVs and uh, what we read in the papers. Then obviously not this is social media also. So this, those are the concerns were there, uh, but yet on that hand, uh, we had two parties. So fortunately, fortunately we didn't have to have the general election, uh, the, the private round, because we went straight to general election because one party, uh, two parties means Prime Minister Round has selected who is the majority, so we we went uh, uh, we went by general election thing, so that uh, helped us a little bit. But on the other hand, uh, it was a big, big concern. And you were talking about uh, meeting with the Indian Election Commission that time. Um, what are the experience uh, experiences that you can share with us, and how do you see elections in India today? <laughs> okay. Fortunately, 
as the auto general, obviously I was invited by the CNAG, so they wanted uh, me to tell them what I would like to see. So somehow I think with this changing times, I wanted to see electronics and computers and things like that. So I'd like to go to South Hyderabad. You know. When there, then they also took me to Bharat Electronics, I think. We have got Hindustan Electronics, Bharat Electronics. And they had arranged an exhibition of uh, electronic voting machine and simple computer calculator, and then obviously solar and other tanks and things like that. So I wasn't uh, interested in uh, electric voting machine at that time. But as a courtesy, I just went by what demo they had. I was more interested in computer because people, farmers, are supposed to use it and it helps them farmer. So I saw, but then didn't. Then later on, when I got election, then again, I was invited by the election commission, so India. So I visited the arranger, short uh, orientation program, then visit, then we went to the other, other, other electronic company. Mm -hmm. So then and there, I, they showed, again, they had an exhibition of polling station. Then in there I decided we we'll go for EVA because mm -hmm. I saw a lot of advantages. No, first and foremost, I regard it as the, is the answer to Indians. How many years of uh, you know acquisition that you all went through is boot rigging and uh, boat dumping and uh, all kind of thing. No, boat rigging, all kind of thing. So I thought this is a well thought out thing. It's it's not a. I told the Indian Election Commission in writing as well as person I was saying you shouldn't have put it what E before it, because people think it's a computer. That's why every now and then losing party or losing candidate says that there's no fair, there's the rigged and so on. There's no way. If you, rig, if you want to, to mess around with this boat, ring machine, you have to, everybody should be co co cooperating, including media. Because you can't do this in a peaceful way, a quiet way. It makes noise. Hmm? And uh, you, at least, and then it has go through a series of stages of selling different people, you know. At the end, you have seen a voting machine. It looks like a real bandage is a kind of thing, you know, with a lot of things like signatures and seals and things like that. You know? So when I was given the job, then I went to there, and when they showed me again, I said, I'm going to go for it. So straight away, I said that, we would like to buy some. So we bought around 130 or something, I think, as a training trial. Then rest, uh, first we bought it, but later on, India government thought that they would like to reimburse the cost. So they reimbursed it as a gift. So we, government put on doesn't have to pay. But we, we bought this EVM because it saves a lot of resources. You know, you don't have to print pay, voting papers, then counting is become easier, you just press it comes, you know. Then transportation. Even the four thousand I think we bought four thousand. Four thousand that also is so many truckloads have come. We had storage problem, you know. So imagine if the boat ballot voting machine, you know, so many, you know. So that has saved us quite a lot, I think voting machine. So I did not have luxury of visiting others, other countries, but India, since in invited, I didn't, couldn't say no, so I went, and that was useful, eye-opening thing, and uh, I'm grateful for it. How, how do you see the Indian democratic system today, from the time that you executed? Indian election system is fantastic, mm -hmm. and uh, they are dedicated people, hardworking people, uh, laws, Somehow, I think, are not perfect, but uh, so far the Indian Election Commission has supported the Supreme Court. So they had been able to do things with the blessing of the Supreme Court. EVM issues comes every now and then, but that also is, no one could prove that there is a fraud thing. Then uh, laws thing, there were some issues could have been, like model code. It's a model code, which is not a, actually, a, legally the binding, but the Supreme Court said that they can go ahead, you know. So that helps because a lot of things, uh, you know, you can't do too much of uh, 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 mischievous things, you know, sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, they do a fantastic job. And uh, 
and I take give do whether right or wrong to Supreme Court support. The, the Supreme Court judges this has been very supportive for them. And I wish surely so also in Bhutan also we expect Supreme Court to play a role as the constitution of the constitution and uh, they, they only have the for the election commission we said only the court has the sole motor role. Otherwise no, no one, you know. So so as uh, Nabin Chawla, when he visited Bhutan in the last dinner, he said that, oh, you and me, we are in a loneliest job, you know. Then I t it made sense, you know. At time election, the chief election commission cannot even consult the election commissioners because you appoint them, delegate them some subcommittee chairs or something. That decision, somebody challenges and comes to you. You can't even consult them. You can't go to the head of state. You can't go to the, the attorney general. Uh, uh, you know, and then you, you have to do things within that stupid time yourself, you know. So it is a lonely job, but then I think also and I think job which probably gives an authority to do things in a efficient way, probably. Yeah. Yeah. But how, how, is, how do you see Bhutan's uh, political system evolving? Um, are they clashing of opinion? Uh, do you see conflict also coming in when politics takes over? No, conflict is, in a way, I regard it, this constitution has provided for it. You have an opposition. Their job is to oppose, obviously. Recent this opposition said that we will not oppose for the sake of opposing. We will oppose it if it is really necessary. You know? So we, we expect that that role to be played by opposition if they think that some national interests or public uh, issues are misused or abused, then they should make a noise. Otherwise, they should not be stumbling block for the sake of the thing. So, so far, I think, okay. But the danger is there that uh, parties can get uh, powerful and then sidetracked. You know. So far, I think we have survived three elections and the fourth one is going on. Mm. And so, hope it will continue. Now you're living also as a common citizen. Uh, yes, and I'm also, you know, also vote. What are the core issues of people today in Bhutan when they go for elections? What are they really looking at when they vote for a political party? Basically, it's obviously everywhere it's the same thing. First, as a, as a voter, as you, you want uh, peace. Second thing is prosperity, uh, which means uh, development activities. So here are the same things. So basically, as a human being is uh, education, health, and then uh, uh, sure put on your plate, that kind of thing. So we are hopeful that the uh, government has come out with a very ambitious 13 plan, 13 plan, which it talks about uh, by 2047 at least, a lot of things will be better. Obviously, in the future, it's going to be and uh, we're going to, they want to be developed Bhutan. Just now, we just graduated from this developed to developing maybe. So they want to develop. So we are hopeful that uh, things will fall in. And in which obviously his master king also has his vision, which influences a lot of decision making uh, on the right path. Yeah, I believe you'll be talking, they will give you the update on their mindful cities, uh, you know, in the southern Bhutan. So you'll know that person probably. And you studied in St. Stephen's College in Delhi. Yes. Um, you know, it shaped your future and in turn you helped shape Bhutan's future. <laughs> How has that journey been? What were the learnings during your college years? Uh, St. Stephen's has been uh, eye-opening. Uh, I studied all along in Bhutan, uh, you know. I had the opportunity to study Kalimpong or somewhere, but for some reason me and my, my best friend who died very recently. He was the, the private secretary of the fourth king. He died as a private secretary in Dasha Wangshin. So he also decided and me also, I think we, we both said we will study in Bhutan. So we came out to Paro from Bumtang. We were in a place called Ura in Bumtang from a remote place. Then uh, after three Third class, we were sent to Jakar school. Then we started out class five, five late, then we were sent to Paro. From Paro, he got taken with his master king to study. I got brought to Yangchenpu in Timpu here, I uh, think. So, so he was also instrumental in supporting the king in some of the ideas. 
And I also fortunate to have completed my school in Bhutan and then had the option of going to college in the sense of And I opting. Uh, and also in opportunity first time, I always said that the only time I became a voter was first time ever was when Shashitaru was one of the candidates for uh, student union's president. Chandramita okay. and one Mizo, um, no Manipuri guy. Three of them were the candidates, so I voted for Chandramita. So I told him when he visited Bhutan last uh, few years back. So I said, I voted for you. Yeah. So, since this was eye opening, uh, because uh, we were strained during the Indira Gandhi's emergency time. Yeah. Yeah. You know? So, then also the Jay Prakash movement started. You could uh, see some movements. And uh, then also, I think, Dusu Student Union where uh, Mr. Arun Jetli, he became elected as president, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so seen, seen that a little bit, mm -hmm. you know. So I think uh, yeah, seen a little bit of uh, Indian uh, election in practice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Though, though as Saint Swins, we know how to take part in that. Mm -hmm. But for the first time, I think Saint Swins, some professors and the students student took part in the JP uh, movement. Mm -hmm. I think Professor Chakrabarti and even I think Mr. Chand Chandan Mitra. Right. Yeah. Do you think today the world is moving towards more authoritarian rule? Or do you see democracy somehow being under threat? Yes, it is worrisome. worrisome. But hope today having watched a little bit of the DNC People like Kamala comes, things might change, hopefully. But uh, if you get Trump, then probably I think there's no guarantee that there won't be a world war, you know? You know? But uh, I hope that things will not be that bad. And uh, as of now, more leaning is to autocratic kind of thing. That kind of concern is there, but then people will have to take the responsibility of exercising the democratic duties and responsibilities. When the election is called, I think everyone should go and vote, at least. You may not like all, but I always, as an election commission, I always tell the Buddhist thing. People said, oh, I don't want to go and vote because I don't like anyone. You know. I think but you may not hate both of them equally. You may at least like one better. So at least vote for somebody. But at least go and show show yourself to vote. Yeah? Now, we don't have the nota in Bhutan just now. Mm. Hopefully, I don't know, in future may have that. Uh, but we are, some people don't go and vote because they don't believe in democracy, they say. You know? mm. But I think you should, since we have decided, we have, will have democracy, you have to do the responsibility. Once in four, five years, in India it's four, five years, no? You say it's four years. I was wondering why they made four years, but you know. so that's you. Do. Then after that, I think if you want to criticize the government at that time, you should have at least voted. Then you have right. Otherwise, you don't even have right to say anything. You have accepted whatever they do. Mm -hmm. Do you think nota is also a vote? Are you a proponent of? I think uh, people should go and vote, but if you don't strong feeling against somebody else, at least you're saying that you don't like both of them. So at least that makes a difference, you know. So I think that's a major decision. So I'm sure it's gone through an election process. Uh, so we should respect the majority have that system put in place. In India's neighborhood also, we've seen, uh, you know, democracies uh, using muscle power, money power, a uh, lot of pulls and pressures, both within and outside. Um, how does Bhutan, a small country, keep itself safe in such time? So far, we have managed fairly well because I think basic the constitution of Bhutan was grandchild of the king of Bhutan. He saw what is happening in the world and then probably he noted down and then put it and then shared this to the Constitutional Committee. They endorsed it. 
So here, parties, uh, election campaign is state finance. You know, they can spend only the amount which state provides equivalent, not more than that. And then the sources of fund should be three different sources. One is uh, one-time voter reg uh, uh, party registration form. Other thing is annual membership. Then you can, we had increased from, I think, uh, one lakh to five lakhs. That political contribution, that also only a registered member can give, not anybody. No power, big parties or companies or foreign countries. Foreign countries, anathema. Okay. So, so there, and those are audited. We review, election commission reviews it. So maybe you should also meet election commission because mm -hmm. I am hesitant to talk on behalf because I'm not the serving chief election commissioner. So that's the thing. So we have the system and they still follow that. And then the king has said that it will be state finance. And that also has advantage of that if, if somebody wants to be a candidate, he doesn't have to worry about money, you know. So his adequate resources are provided for him to carry out an effective uh, campaign. So then the rest is up to how he convinces the voters. You know? so, so otherwise, you know, a uh, lot of problem. No, I'm like, somebody will buy the votes. You know? So that is, uh, funding is uh, all man managed. We have a law. Uh, as the uh, as, uh, as election commission, when you started, we looked at constitution and we found out that first is the promise we have to have election law. So we did that. Then I found out that we have to do a public election fund law. So we did that. Then there was a need for a referendum, which was not too immediate, but I sub submitted saying that referendum is not too urgent. Then I said, at least I have a basic one. So we have a referendum act also. Referendum act is basically you can also issues, you can take it public. 